Sharon, if he'll come on up and help me out today. I was really looking for somebody who was real jailbait. <laughs> and I was thinking like Heath Strickland. But then I thought, no, we're just going to go with somebody who's truly an innocent individual. Now, we're doing our uh, series on our year theme, which is Hidden Treasures. Now, here's our treasure box. And you never quite know what's going to come out of this, but you'll be happy to see these today, Carter. I got, uh, got these from a friend, and uh, I, I thought about asking, you know, another criminal, Jamie Steinberg, to come on up here. Jamie can take me in a second. So hold out your hands. I just want to do just a little demonstration. Have you ever had uh, handcuffs on before? Okay, well, this is a good kind of fresh experience for you. Um, <laughs> So, uh, what's, that, what's that feel like? Cold. Cold. Uh, it, probably in a variety of ways. Um, feel good? Not really good. Um, you, you eager to have that on again? No. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You can go on. <laughs> what? Oh, you know... I'm kind of disturbed about this. On the other hand, it can be a good thing. I couldn't figure out how to make this work, to get these <laughs> off. And then I found out, you know who told me about this, how, how it works? Our, uh, our mid-high <laughs> youth director. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, that, that's really interesting. You know, I'm a, uh, but she actually has uh, a degree in criminal justice, which is why we hired her. <laughs> to uh, work with our little criminals. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what's that? You're a good man. Well, let's express our appreciation to him. Thank you. Now, the truth is, when you put these on, it makes this sound. Listen to this. It's not a good sound. It is the sound of, listen, freedom going away. You don't want to spend your time in these. Matter of fact, I had this, I love Walmart. I said, Lord, if all the stores in America are destroyed, just leave Walmart, and I'm good with that. I, but I had something really creepy happen one day when I walked into Walmart. I was, you know, approaching the, the front entrance, and I, I saw three kind of Jamie-sized individuals kind of lurking about there, and they sort of, they weren't in uniform, but they looked police-ish, whatever that is. And, and somebody seemed to be talking. You know how they have the little walkie-talkie things? And I remember thinking, I wonder what's going on. All of a sudden, they all went, Whoo! and a guy from inside, there are four of them, and they just they grabbed one guy who was coming out of the store, I'm assuming a shoplifter, and Whoo! down he went onto the ground, and next thing they knew, he was wearing these brace, bracelets, compliments of the uh, police department. And I remember watching that thinking, before they recognize me, just in case they have another pair, I'm going to keep moving. And so I, I went on in. But it was a creepy experience. How many of you uh, have been in, in jail? <laughs> you know, I mean... <laughs> I guess I'm probably asking more information than I really want here. So, uh, okay. Uh, we'll just assume that you were visiting somebody, okay? We're just... I remember the first time I went in to the prison. It's pretty creepy. It's not like a warm, fuzzy place. You go in, and uh, after you sign your life away and give your license and all that stuff, you come to this big honking metal door and there's an electronic thing that goes clung, and then the door opens and you step in but not into the prison into this just small area and then the door behind you goes tung, and you are stuck between these two doors now, I gotta tell you that is not a pleasant feeling there's no going forward and there's no going backward. You just are stuck. And not until the back door is locked do they open the front door. And then when you go through that door, you're in the prison. But 
here's the deal to get back out you got to go through two doors it is not a place you want to like voluntarily hang out Carter what would you think about if you woke up every morning and said wow that's cool I think I'm just gonna put on some uh, some of these cool bracelets and wear them all day you know, not a good idea nobody says yeah I just want to walk around shackled all day now as creepy as it is being in jail or having the, uh, these on. Here's what is astonishing to me. There are many people who go about shackled voluntarily even though they're not in prison. Oh no, it's not these kind. It's stuff you can't see. It's kind of like Ebenezer Scrooge. You remember when Marley comes to see him, he's clanking and dragging all the chains and all that? Well, he, he tells Ebenezer Scrooge, you know, your chains were as long as mine seven years ago, and you've been working on them since. And Scrooge says, I don't see any chains. But by the end of the story, we discover that the chains are inward chains. They're chains of greed, chains of harshness, chains with a lack of compassion for the people around him. Remember how he goes home, and, he, and he's got this great big home, and it's just for him, and he locks himself into this dark room. And he's got just this little fire, because he's saving his money. And he eats out of a little bowl, cold gruel. Do you know what gruel is? I don't either, but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> You know, and, and he's got this shrunken, shriveled life. The, the truth is, he is in chains. But he doesn't know it because they're chains he can't see. Now, here's the really sad thing. There are some of us who continually go around in chains when God wants to set us free, but there's something in us that doesn't ever allow God to do for us what He wants to do. There are things that shackle us. So let's just talk about a couple of these things. And by the way, you know, that's a really great trick to say, it's getting dull here, you know. <laughs> just messing with it. But it really does work. Anyway, but... It may be that, I'm just going to give you a few examples, and you say, ah, well, you know, that doesn't really fit me, but we've prayed that the Holy Spirit would reveal to each of us our own heart, and whatever it is that God speaks to your spirit, maybe that's what it is that God's calling on you to be aware of and deal with something where He wants to set you free. Take this, for instance. I know some people who have been in bondage to unforgiveness for something someone did 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And yet they just refuse to forgive them. And, and the problem is they're in shackles. You know, somebody said unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person will die. It doesn't work, it just keeps us in constant bondage. Maybe that there's somebody who's living in constant fear of what if? What if this happened? What about that? And we live in this constant fear and dread. And what it's done is it simply shackled us. And we're bound up. Our own Marion Mitchell, retired Methodist pastor, wonderful friend of ours, I, I remember him saying this past Wednesday, I asked our Wednesday group about this idea of living looking out the rearview mirror instead of out the windshield. You know, the future's out in front of you. The rearview mirror, you just kind of catch a glimpse of what's behind you, but you don't want to spend all your time driving looking out the rearview mirror, do you? You'll have a short trip, and it will end badly. You've got to look out the windshield. And yet some of us are still shackled and trapped in our past. And I, I, we were, I was just getting examples from them. Where, where did they find themselves chained in the past and how to get forward? And Marion said, well, I had some people in the church, uh, Rusty, I think you were one of them, kept coming over and saying, how, how about come and do prison ministry with us? And Marion said, I'll think about it. And then he said, what I was thinking was, when pigs fly. 
<laughs> he said, I don't want to go do that. I'm not going to go into jail. But finally, God spoke to his heart and said, there are people who need you in prison. So now miriam has got this wonderful heart for people who are in prison. They are literally in jail, but figuratively, they are bound up to and through him and Rusty and so many others in our congregation who go into the prisons, God begins to work to set people free. Now, see, we say, oh, yeah, yeah, I understand they're in prison. But the truth is that there are many of us who are walking around free, and yet we find ourselves bound up. Today, I want to bring you greetings from the girls who are on the chrysalis flight out at Camp Tigert. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with what chrysalis is, it's a three-day weekend similar to the walk to Emmaus. You may have heard of that, or Curcio, or Tres Dias. It's called different things in different denominations. all basically the same deal. It's a sort of a three-day retreat. And I need to tell you uh, a couple things. Number one, we have some of the young women from our church who are in leadership out there. I am so proud of them. They are living out their faith in Christ and, and are a powerful witness. But there are a couple of things that I came away from there, it's still going on, that I just want to share with you. This is, this is very painful for me to share the front part of this. These precious high school girls, some of them are carrying such incredible burdens on their hearts. Our society dumps things, especially it seems, on young girls. And there are pressures on them, and some of them have been victims of abuse. And It just pains me to see these girls as they begin to talk about these needs. I had the privilege of praying with some of them. But here's the great thing. I watched as Jesus began to set them free. And one of the most painful things to me is that some of these girls who are victims of abuse blame themselves for it. So it's not just that they're hurt, then they add to it, it's all my fault. And they're just struggling along, trying to find their way through life. But I'm telling you, Jesus sets them free. And it's just like receiving a gift. And it's amazing to watch as... They share their hearts and their brokenness, and we watch as God heals them. And I got to tell you, I got jealous. I said, God, I want you to do this at, at, at First Methodist too. I, I don't want this to be just for a retreat. I want this to be for us all. There's some of us who are just tied up in, in a hurt. Somebody may be tied up in an addiction Somebody may be wounded in some way in the past and you've just been carrying that guilt or that hurt all these years and it just doesn't seem you can get free. I'm going to give an invitation just a, a minute here to come to the altar. This is a great place to leave your junk. You know, we say, oh gosh, I wonder what people are going to be thinking about me. Well, let me tell you something I do every Monday night. You ready for this? By the way, if you think, oh, he's going to give some great revelation, you do it too. I don't know what night you do it, but Monday nights I take out my trash. <laughs> and you know what all the neighbors say? They say, oh, gosh, look, Bob's got trash out there. No, they don't. They take their trash out there too. Listen, we all get junk. Here's the deal. We take it out because we want to get rid of it. Can you imagine what my house would be like if I said, well, I'm embarrassed to take my trash out. I think I'm just going to keep it in here. <laughs> After a little while, the trash should take over. And yet, that's exactly what happens in our lives. We just let the trash build up. Here's a great place to leave it. So here's my invitation. It may be that there's, God's been talking to you about something you just need to lay down here. Do it. Don't, well, I wonder what everybody... Listen, we are the part of the family of God. And all of us pray for one another. Lay down your own trash. Here's the second thing. Some of you may say, man, I just know there's somebody I love dearly who is carrying all these burdens. I want to come and pray for them. And I want to bring them to God. The invitation is open for you. 
But let me just give you, before we close, a couple of examples. I asked at our Wednesday supper about this. You know, are we going to spend our time all about our past, shackled to our past? On the front page of the bulletin, you can look at it later, is a whole different tack on this that we haven't even gone to today about the good old days. You know, somebody said the Methodist church is just perfectly set in case 1950 ever comes back again. <laughs> 1950 isn't coming back! You know, there isn't any need to spend all our time looking out the rearview mirror. God's future is out there for us, and we're just trusting that God will help us to be people who are looking forward. There are a, a number of wonderful little illustrations, and, and let me just uh, give you uh, a couple of them. First, um, Katie Reed spoke up. She said, I went off to Bernal College, which is, you know, away from home and family, and, you know, it was just kind of scary here. Uh, and I, I went, but I had the courage because I went with a friend of mine, and we were roommates together. And after we'd been there for a while, she said, I came home from classes one day, the roommate was gone, packed her stuff and came back home. And Katie had a decision to make. Did she go back? Is, is her life in the rearview mirror, or is it out the windshield? And she said she just believed it was spooky there. I had to spend the rest of the semester by herself, but she just said, my future's here. And as she did that, she said, and I love this, Thomas. She, she said, if I had, hadn't uh, stayed there, I'd never have met Thomas. Think about that. Her whole life has changed because of that decision. She determined that it may be a little scary right now, but here's where God's calling me. Here's where my future is. And then this last one. It's pretty hard. There was uh, a friend of mine, is a friend of mine, who um, at the age of, I think, about 16, became uh, a pregnant uh, young mother out of wedlock. And so she's carrying this child, did not go to church, family never went to church, didn't have any you know, real church background, but a friend of hers said, hey, why don't you come to my church? And so she said, okay. When she got to that church, the people there told her, you're going to go to hell and your baby's going to go to hell. I've got to ask you, what are people thinking? Do we not understand? I mean, do we gather together here and somehow think we're better than everybody else? This is a place where we dispense God's grace, not condemnation, judgment. Well, I'll be honest with you. If I had been her, I'd never have darkened the door of the church again. Fast forward a lot of years, and God brought her another friend. It's a really long and interesting story. We don't have time for it. But this other friend said, how about come with me to church? Give God another, another chance. What you heard before was not the good news of Jesus Christ. And so she came, and God began to do something in her heart, and she gave her life to Jesus Christ and was baptized. And I'm telling you, I'm so grateful that she didn't say, I looked in the rearview mirror and I saw that bitterness and hatred from a church and I'm just shutting it down. She believed maybe, maybe God has something else for me and was willing to move forward. I believe that today there are some of us who are just chained in the past who are still hurting from something that happened years ago and we can't get free of it. I'm telling you, God is here to take these handcuffs off. We don't need to live in that Im imprisoned state anymore. Whom the Son sets free will be free indeed. Let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, I've just given a few examples. The truth is there are a thousand different things that can bind us and shackle us and hold us in the past. A fear or uh, an addiction or some wound that came to us or something that we did do that is a sin that broke our relationship with God and we just have never come back and asked forgiveness. And, well, today's a day of hope. Today is a day of breakthrough. 
We're tired of keeping all the trash in the house of our heart. Just stinking the place up. We're asking for your grace that we can just leave it here at the altar. I mean, leave it. And let God just throw it away once and for all. And we can be set free. Because whom the Son sets free will be free indeed. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, let's stand together. We're going to sing our, our closing hymn. It's not a, a long hymn. But you know, it doesn't take a long time to do our business with God. The altar's open. Whether you want to come for yourself, or I'll bet there are lots of us who want to come for people we love, come to the altar. Here's a place where we can be set free. Come, friends, as we sing. Isn't it great to know that we're not stuck in the past? That the things that have held us in the past, God can set us free from in the future. You and I have a brand new future to step into, and we can do that simply by taking hold of the hand of Jesus. No longer do we have to be shackled. Instead, we are set free. You are set free today through Jesus Christ.